go. Welcome back. We have some uh, technical difficulty. Let us know at any point when you cannot he hear Pete anymore so we can uh, go back in debug mode. Right now, our next clinician is the owner of Dead Rail Installs. In his free time, he, pra he, he has practiced weathering using a variety of materials and styles. He has become an expert on using pan pastels with other weathering products to create realistic effects on cars, locomotives, and structures. Also the division director of the PSR San Diego division and the PSR membership chair. Welcome, Pete Steinmetz. Thank you, Speed. That was, uh, that was a good introduction, just like I wrote. Uh, so I don't actually have to say anything about that, but uh, uh, welcome. Uh, this is a great opportunity for uh, me to present a, a clinic and I changed it up a little bit. Uh, we've had some really good weathering guys on here, uh, Ralph Renzetti among others, uh, that are really uh, just top of the line weathering guys. Um, what I'm gonna do is change it up a little bit and I'm gonna go for the guys that maybe are a little uh, nervous about weathering their cars or, or don't quite understand it. Um, this is gonna be basically a beginner's class to show guys uh, how to start weathering. And after that, practice, 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 and, and uh, you'll get good at it. And uh, I, I used to belong to an end scale club and I started weathering probably about 10 years ago. And uh, they still have a few of those cars on their layout. And when I went and visited them, I looked at them and I went, man, these things really suck. And uh, I offered to take them back and, and clean them up a little bit, but they said, nah, just, just leave them the way they are. So, what we're gonna do, uh, Pan Pastels is, is uh, my main uh, weathering product. I'm gonna show you a few things with Pan Pastels. I'm gonna tell you where you can get some. It's not a great investment. You can get by with just using a few uh, basic colors. Um, I'm gonna switch cameras right now. And so I can actually show you some stuff. Uh, there may be a slight delay and Okay, hopefully everybody can still hear me. Um, we are going to start with some uh, pan pastels. I have an uh, Indiana Harbor Belt boxcar here that uh, from a kit that I just built. Uh, it's a Branch Line uh, Yardmaster series, which are very nice kits. Um, one of the things, the first thing I do when I get these kits built is I uh, I go out and. Uh, and clear coat, uh, put flat finish on them. Um, I don't use dull coat because that's I just don't like dull coat very much. I think there's a lot better and less expensive products out there. Uh, Krylon makes a good clear flat. Rust-Oleum makes a good clear flat. Um, also, the the best one I found is a, the Tamiya TS80. Uh, it's great stuff, but it's expensive. It's about double the price of of uh, the Rust-Oleum and the Krylon, uh, but it puts a very fine mist out there. So I use that uh, for cars that I that I really like. The, the rest of them that are just going to be run of the mills is I use Krylon on it. But uh, don't be bashful. You don't need a, a really uh, thick coat on there. Just a few light sprays uh, will give the tooth give some tooth for the pan pastels and the pigments that I'm going to use. So without further ado, the first thing I do is I uh, fade the lettering. And uh, one thing I use, I use these tiny little, these are uh, eye, eyebrow brushes, and I will show you. These come from Target, they're $2 for a pack of 24. Hopefully you can see that, they're called Eye Applicator Shading, and they're just little foam brushes. Um, Target always has them, easy to find. Sometimes they'll look at you a little funny when you ask for, uh, eyeliner brushes, but uh, don't worry about it. Um, I take my pan pastel. This particular color is called Red Iron Oxide Shade. And I lightly, very lightly, put a little bit on there. And then I will go over and I will start pulling from the top down. And when you go over the lettering, it just fades it just a little bit. And it's really easy. I mean, I see guys get into doing some, some uh, putting really a lot of effort into fading lettering, spraying them with an airbrush with, with white and, and, and different colors. And, and this is just so easy. It just takes seconds to do. Um, 
one of the nice things about pan pastels is you can blend them. So I'm just kind of fading in a, in, and I try to get a color that's similar to what the car uh, color actually is. And that works pretty well. Um, next color I'm going to put on here is called, um, this one is called uh, Permanent Red Extra Dark. And uh, it's just a little bit darker. I use the same side of the brush that I used with the last color and I go on and I'm just uh, mixing them a little bit. Hopefully everybody can see this. It's very subtle, um, very subtle. You don't, you, you know, you don't need a lot. You're just pulling it down, starting at the top and pulling it down. Um, and if you can see this, these colors are just all nicely blending together. Um, another color I'm going to use is called Burnt Sienna Shade. And it is more of a, of a brown color. And I'm going to hit the bottom of the car with this. And it's it, easy to do. These things, it's, they're really nice because they blend. They blend so well together. Um, one of the things that, that, that people ask is, well, if I'm going to get started with pan pastels, what do I do? And I suggest if you don't have any, you go buy a set. Uh, sets are available. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. There's a, a set that's basically uh, rusts and browns. There's another one that's grays. Uh, there's another one, I believe it's called locomotive. But, but all of these sets contain like uh, six or seven different colors. And, uh, and they'll get you going. Or you can go someplace like Dick Blick and just buy a couple of colors. Um, take a car in there and, and buy a couple of colors that, that look like boxcar red or whatever car you're, you're looking at. Um, works good. Um, so I'm just going to go over this a little bit for, for a couple of minutes here. And I'm going to use the browns. And I'm going to use the reds. Get in the door here a little bit. Hopefully everybody can see this because it is subtle. And, you know, you get a little bit on there and, and, and let's say I make a mistake. Oh, that's just way too much on there. You can see that I just covered that, that B up and I, I don't really want to do that. Um, one of the great things about Pam Pastels is it's really forgiving. So I don't like that B. So I take my little gummed eraser, which is like a... Uh, uh, Faber Castile. These things cost a buck. They're at uh, at Hobby Lobby, Michaels. They're just a little gum eraser, and I will just go over this. And as you can see, voila, takes it all away. So then I can go back being a little bit more careful and very lightly drag it down here and just fade it just a bit. And the fades on them, they're not uniform. So maybe one letter is a little bit darker than another. Um, it's pretty hard for you guys to see this because as I say, these things are, are, are pretty subtle. Uh, I've tried to light my work area as, as best I can without having uh, floodlights on top of it. Um, so I take another color, one of the two original colors that I used, and I just pull it down. And I'm just fading that lettering in it. And, and I'm fading the side of the car. And it works really well. You can see how quickly I did that. And um, how I got started it with Pan Pastels is Tony Custer had an article at Model Railroader uh, a few years ago about weathering uh, cars with pan pastels and he he did it really fast he and, and you could do it fast you can get some grays and some some browns and all of that and you can go over your your uh, your cars very quickly and i thought well what if i spent a little bit more time on them what would happen and, and that's how i really got into uh into using pan pastels is i would go into dick blick and buy colors and i bought some really weird colors that i thought i'd never use uh that turns out that i use them all the time and I'll get into that in just a minute. So that's the car side. We're going to spend a bit of a bit of time on the wheels. Um, one of the things that I use for wheels is I use this Floquel enamel paint marker. Uh, these are no longer available as this brand of Floquel, but they are still available. A tester still makes them, and they, they call them something different. You just shake them up a little bit. 
there's all kinds of other brands uh, that, that do the same thing. Um, has a little tip on the end, and you take the tip and you just touch it a little bit to get it flowing, and then you go right into your car wheel, and I just leave it on there. I just spin it, and then I color the go over it a little bit, and and I'm I'm not so much trying to fully color it as I'm just trying to get some some liquid on there uh, for the next step. And the next step is I take some pigments and I use, this is an ammo of MIG pigment. Uh, AK Interactive has uh, very similar colors. And one thing I like about the military guys stuff is they've got such a huge range of colors. Um, you can also use AIM or Bragdon, but their color selection is, is not as great. I think Bragdon has one rust color and a lot of the military guys have five and six rust colors. So I just take a little bit of this and I just put it on the, the, uh, the wheels that are still wet on the inside of them. And it does two things. It colors them and it gives a little texture. Whoop. So now that I've got my wheels done, I just let them dry. Just let them dry like that. I don't do anything more to them than, than uh, throw a little bit of this on. You can also take a little bit of rust color and throw it on too. Um, these things are a few dollars and, and you can find them. Uh, most shops that sell stuff to the military guys have this. Um, a lot of the kit shops, uh, which there seem to be more of those around still than there are uh, uh, model train shops. And you can just kind of go over it, just throw it on. Don't be, you don't need to be too careful. Um, just colors it up, leaving a little pigment on there. And then the next thing I'm going to do, and, uh, and you don't have to go to this kind of detail. You can just simply do it with a pan pastel. Uh, you can take a, a nice, uh, oh, a nice gray color and just go over go over them and it works really well now it blends in really nicely with the pigments that i just put on there um, but the really cool stuff and, and uh, um, if you watch Dwayne's clinic a couple of hours ago he talked about this these are uh these are weathering pencils from ak interactive and uh they are great i, I really like them uh i was using uh, the the uh, prismacolor pencils and carbothello pencils i like those a lot too um, any of these you can use them wet or dry and so i'm just going to go over here just a wee bit and i'm going to put some uh, rust on the springs and this is a this is a very bright colored rust um, there's other colors that uh, that you can use there's a medium rust that you can put on there you don't want any one color to stand out. You want them to all just be subtle and blend in. As if you can see that, there's two different colors of rust right there on, on, the, uh, on the springs on the truck. Um, works, out, works out really well. Um, the stuff dries, you got some texture in there, you've got a blend of colors. Uh, uh, I, I really like to, to, to blend colors at, at uh, it, it works real well, um, and, it, and it gives a really good appearance. I'm kind of, a, 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 as far as weathering, a less is more guy. And so I'm just going to take some of these uh, pigments, and I'm going to go along the, the, the lower door here, because this is stuff that would normally blow up from the, from the tracks. I go along there just with a little bit of what I call debris, and any of the pigments that, that you uh, that you drop on your work service, they can all be reused. And just don't worry about them because they blend in and they make some really nice colors. So I'm just lightly going along here. Now, when the usually you weather from the top down, but on the uh, if you're trying to, to go for the, the effect of stuff that's blown up from the tracks, um, you go from the bottom up. But you don't go all the way up. You just go a little bit. Once again, very subtle. As you can see, I'm, I'm not being too awful careful with this stuff because weathering is not awful careful. So I get here on this, uh, this particular uh, step and, and I don't like the, I, I, I just don't like it. I, I need something more on there. 
Um, I'm going to need some gray on there. So I once again take very subtly You can see, once again, I'm still blending. So this is three colors right here that are that are blended together. When I do this, I end up with half weathered cars and every once in a while I'll take a, my evening modeling time and I'll sit down and I'll uh, do the other halves of the cars because I can't really run these things. I take them to the club layout and and they're all half weathered and I'm not really liking it that much. Once again, you can go over the, the you, you can go over your trucks and you're just blending it in. You're just adding thin layers of color over the top of, uh, of what's already there. When I, when I do the trucks, um, when I, how I do these, the car, uh, when I take it outside and put the flat finish on it, um, I will take it and I will set it like this. I will spray it. I'll spray along here, pointing down, getting getting this part. I'll then go around to the other side and do the same thing. Then I take them and very carefully pick them up by the couplers because you won't leave fingerprints that way. I turn it on the top and I do the same thing. So I go over it this way. And then I go over it this way. I do the same thing with the ends, hit them from uh, both when the car's on its top and when the car's on its wheels. And you don't need to do much, just a couple of little sprays like that. That's it. That's all you need to do. You're not really, all you're doing is giving some tooth for the, uh, uh, for your weathering media, your pan pastels and your pigments and all that to stick. Um, <clears throat> I see a lot, um, I use a lot of photos. Let me show you a photo right here. This is a Canadian Pacific boxcar. Uh, I go on the internet, get photos, and then send them to Costco and get uh, five by seven prints of them. And uh, and I always use, I 100% recommend, especially if you're new, that you use photos. They're easy to find online. Uh, there's all kinds of sites that, that, you, that you can uh, find them. You don't have to have the exact car. Like, for instance, this is a 40-foot Canadian Pacific versus a 40-foot International Harbor Belt. doesn't matter. They're both going to weather about the same because the cars are used in uh, system-wide. Uh, if, if, for instance, you've got a car that just goes from the mine uh, to, let's say, the smelter or an offload facility, it's going to have different weathering. Look at where it's at, what type of, uh, what type of environment it, it is, it's actually in. Uh, is it in a desert? Is it in mountains? Look at that, because that'll determine what kind of weathering the, the car has. And usually you can find, uh, you can find stuff uh, that's, that's pretty close. I mean, it doesn't need to be exact. It just should be somewhat representative. Um, <clears throat> I used to uh, think I was cool, and I would uh, do N-scale cars, and I would put them on eBay to, to sell. And... <laughs> It was funny because I'd, I'd do a nice car and I'd, I'd spend a lot of time on it. I was probably, for what I was asking, doing it for about 10 cents an hour. And I'd put them on there and they'd sit there and it'd be a, a car like this and it wouldn't sell. And I go, why, why aren't we people buying these? So I went back and I got some uh, graffiti decals and I threw some graffiti decals on and those things sold like hotcakes. And uh, the era that I modeled transition, there really wasn't any graffiti. So I don't have it really on... Uh, on, on the cars that I do, um, I have a few modern cars just to have a modern train because I like Canadian Pacific SD40-2s. Um, so I have a few modern cars for them to pull, and I have some graffiti on some of those cars. But uh, uh, graffiti is a whole art, and, and I, I'm by no means an artist. Uh, I still uh, I still can draw stick figures pretty good, but I, I'm not an artist. Um, I see some guys do some hand uh, freehand graffiti, and I just I'm amazed at the the level of talent that they have for, for doing graffiti. I need a uh, uh, I need a decal, and, and it works good. There's there's plenty of decals out there available uh, for graffiti. So we've gotten this the side somewhat done, and as as it goes from uh, from dirtier at the bottom to 
to up the side a little bit, it becomes more subtle. Um, heavier concentration of dirt down here, less concentration of dirt, but it kind of blends itself out. Somehow or another, there's a little mark there, but you know what? There's exactly those kinds of marks right here on the side of the boxcar. So I have a prototype photo. It's funny because some guys say, well, that's not how it really looks. And, you know, you pull out a photo and say, yeah, it is. And there you go. And it kind of quiets them down because there's always guys that think that they know more. And sometimes they do, but many times they don't. Um, but just remember, it is your railroad, so you can do whatever you want with it. Now, getting over here to the to the ladders. These brushes are great for doing the side, but they can't really get in here very well. So there's another tool that I use. Um, these are called color shapers, C-O-L-O-U-R shaper, S-H-A-P-E-R. Uh, you can buy them individually or in sets in art supply stores. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon. They're a bit pricey if you buy the set. Uh, you want to buy the ones that are called firm. There's a soft one and a firm one, and you want the firm ones. Uh, the soft ones just are too soft for what we're doing. So I'm going to take a little bit of my color, and I'm going to go right in here. And darn if that thing doesn't get right in there. These color shapers also come in different shapes. But you can see I filled that in very nicely without doing... Uh, doing too much um, in this shape yeah, it's interesting I don't know if you can how well you can see that but it's just it, it's it's flat but then it's uh, bent and there's another one that is uh, on both sides it's tapered and that's also a good one to use these are nice because you can clean them up at the end you just a little soap and water cleans them right up and once again you can do some blending I thought that was a little too dark, so I just blended it over a little bit. Same with this one. It's really nice for getting down, um, down, in the, down in any type of recess. You can also use it on the ends to get in this area, because that's kind of sometimes a little hard to get to. So in order to get good at this stuff, you've got to practice. And, and you don't want to practice on your good cars. You want to go to the swap meets and pick up those old Tyco dollar cars and, and just some of, the, some of the stuff that's painted pretty funny. Or, you know, uh, I've dumpster dived for cars before where I knew somebody threw a bunch of them away and, and pulled them out and just used them for weathering practice and, and passed them along to... Uh, to a friend of mine in the LA division, James Kena, who does hands-on weathering, and he supplies a car. So he doesn't want to go out and buy really good cars. So he supplies cars for people to practice on. Um, and it, it's a lot of fun to just practice on some old junker because you don't have an emotional attachment to it. And uh, it's never going to run on your railroad. So you can do whatever you want to it. Uh, and it works pretty well. So I highly recommend that you practice on uh, on your old cars. Uh, don't practice on your new prize winning model. You'll get to that eventually after you get good at it and get some photos and you feel confident that you can, uh, that you can reproduce the colors. Um, another thing I do is I use these little uh, disposable brushes that are ultra brush. They come in different sizes. Uh, there's, there's some little ones that are, uh, more like Q-tips and, and there's these type of brushes, just the regulars. Um, I try to buy them when they're on sale somewhere because they can be a little pricey. I think I paid $1.99 at Hobby Lobby for this pack. Uh, but they're pretty good to, to, to use in all kinds of weathering things. Uh, they get into the cracks a little bit better than the foam brushes do. And you can get it right into the some of these details. They're really not hard enough to get into the ladders uh, but they're good for doing sides and getting into ribs and ends. Like doing the ends and getting right down in here. And because I, I uh, sprayed this, 
with uh, with clear flat, I've got some tooth in there, so that it's, it sticks pretty well. So we, one of the things I do is when I get a lot of of of, of the pan pastels on there, I use what I, what's called a fan brush. This is a very soft bristled brush. And I'll just go from always from top to bottom on using this brush, always from top to bottom. And it pulls, it just pulls it down. And you're cleaning off the excess that's just sitting on there. It'll accumulate down here in your work surface. And by all means, scrape that stuff up and use it again. Because um, you'll end up with some really cool colors if you do that. Um, there's another tool that I use. This is uh, from Dick Blick. It's called a scrubber brush. And what it is, it's got some very short little bristles on it. And they're very, uh, very tight, very tough. And you can go on this, like for instance, if you really need to get in somewhere, you can go like this and just don't worry about bearing down on it. Just scrub that sucker and get it right in here. And it really penetrates and it, it, it really gets in there. Uh, once again, this brush can be cleaned with uh, easily with soap and water. But it, it, it's got enough of a, of a tip at the end that you can really, you know, get into some little slots like run some rust down here. You can also run some rust from the roof of the car down. Because rust will come down from the roof. Hopefully you can uh, you can see that once again subtle but effective. Uh, using another color, going right here. You can see there really aren't any big tricks to this. It's just having a few colors and and practicing. Um, it's fun for me. It's it's pretty relaxing after a tough day. I can go and and. and uh, uh, relax by making a clean car dirty, and that's what it's all about. Uh, Dwayne uh, Richardson in his clinic a couple of hours ago talked about ideas about where weathering should be. Um, actually, we should do a clinic together. He can talk about the philosophy, and I can do the uh, do do the weathering. And uh, uh, but but you have to think about where the weathering should be, and that's where that's where photos come in really well. Um, I've got some other photos that I use. Costco was liking me a lot before we had our lockdown because I was always out there having to print stuff. And uh, as you can see, the whole idea of this was not to get a full car. It was just to, to highlight the weathering. Uh, areas where the doors have, sc have, have scraped and, and took the paint off and, and caused uh, some rust. Um, there's some interesting rust down here along the, the, the rivet lines. Um, also some rust over here where this door scraped along the side. Uh, you can see you can see rust on the uh, on the top uh, between the the, uh, the the side and the and the, and the roof line. Uh, there's also streaks that come down here that you can do. You can take one of the colored pencils and and uh, make some rust streaks that come down. Usually following a rivet line, I can just go down like that and, and just do some, just, you're just, all I'm doing is highlighting the rivets very subtly. And if you get a little bit too much on, not a problem. Take your little eraser and go over it, or you can blend it in. So I erased that a little bit, but not to my satisfaction. So I'm going to just blend that thing right in a little bit with some pan pastels over the top of it. And as you can see, it, it just blends right in. All these things work well together, the, both the, the, the pigments that I use um, and also the, uh, the pencils, uh, the pan pastels. Um, they, all, they all work really well uh, together. Um, it just takes practice. It's just practice, practice, practice. And, and you'll, you'll find some cars that you just go, man, this isn't very good. And hold on to one of your first cars and look at it after a couple of years. And you'll find that it's, uh, um, you'll look at it and you'll probably laugh and you'll say, well, that's not what I meant to do. And I wasn't very good at that. But, but keep at it because it, uh, um, you'll get better.
and uh, and you'll get into using your, uh, your your prized cars. As you can see, I'm just kind of adding a little bit, blending a little bit. But sometimes I get it a little bit too much and there's some powder left on there. So I take it off like this and then I'm going to go back over it. Just very subtly add a little bit of color over the top of this mark. And voila, bends right in. And if you say, well, that doesn't look quite right. Well, there's that. Here's another car, Canadian Pacific wheat uh, box car. You can see it's really dirty here, but there's some lighter areas right here and right here. Uh, the door has dirt at the bottom and dirt here, but it's it's cleaner up there. Um, now, what, another thing that's really hard to do is uh, is find photos of, of roofs of cars. Roofs of cars are tough. Um, I have a couple of roofs in here somewhere. There's a couple of roofs. If you look at that, that's a 40 foot box car, just a, a pretty much a transition early diesel era. There's some early trailer train stuff on here, but look at the roof. The wooden boards are, are, are lighter. Uh, there's one missing right there, uh, but there's grays and, and a couple shades of gray. There's a dark gray right here. There's a, it goes to lighter gray. Um, you can do that. I mean, that's, uh, takes a little practice, but, but, uh, but you can do that. And let me show you real quick. Obviously I'm not going to do the whole car, but I'll just do a little bit of it right there. And I'm going to get a little bit in here. And don't forget that the um, it will run down the sides a little bit. We'll do one here and we'll run it down the side. And we're going to use the scrubber brush. Oops, here it is. We're going to use a scrubber brush. You'll never believe what color this is. It looks gray green and it's called turquoise extra dark. Now you'd never use any of the other turquoise on, on here because they are actually more turquoise. But this is just subtly hitting the top and running down the side just a wee bit. I'm of the school that less is more in weathering. Um, I look at a lot of military modelers. There's tons of YouTube videos on how to do weathering that the military guys do. Uh, they actually spend a lot of time uh, on the, their finishes, a lot more than we do, because most of the time their models are static. Um, so they don't have to move. They don't have to worry about uh, decoders or, or clean wheels or motors or any of that stuff. So they can go and put a couple of dabs of something on, on their car or on their tank or whatever. And then they come back the next day and put a couple more dabs on and, and just continue like that. Uh, we really can't or don't spend as much time doing that uh, as, as they do. Um, but you can learn a lot of the techniques. And I, I've, I've got a lot of military friends that, that model that I've, uh, uh, that I've met through Facebook and through other uh, other areas, and uh, and I look at their techniques and, and and I become good friends with them. I joke with my wife that if uh, we ever go to Poland, I won't have to buy a beer because I know so many military modelers over in Poland, and these guys are over the top. I mean, their 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 stuff is is so awesome. It's just uh, it's just incredible what these guys do, uh, especially with their their scenery. Um, 
I have a friend, Martin Wahlberg in the Netherlands that has Martin Wahlberg Scenic Studios. And he, uh, um, he's got some incredible scenery. It's available in the US through Scenic Express, but, but give a look to some of the stuff that he does. He has a lot of uh, big presence on Facebook. But when you look at his, his, uh, his shrubbery and his weeds and his, his small trees and that, it, it's, it's just amazing. Um, so there's all kinds of guys out there doing different things. And uh, I'm not sure how many questions we've got, but um, I'm about to, ready to take some questions. We have a few. Okay, well, hit it. Let's do in, it. In the beginning, you listed some colors. Yes. We got another question for what's the common pan pastel colors you use. Okay, that's a great question. I will tell you. Um, one is called Permanent Red Extra Dark. I like that a lot. There's another one called Red Iron Oxide Shade. The shades are going to be a little bit darker. Uh, Pan Pastel uh, comes in, in a neutral color. There's, there's a red iron oxide. There's one called Red Iron Oxide Tint that will be lighter because all the tints have white added to them. And the darks and extra darks have black added to them. So that makes it takes a color. Like, for instance, this one that I was using, this turquoise, um, the only one that's really that I really like is the extra dark because uh, it really doesn't look very turquoise. It looks more of a blue, but when you put it on a car, it, it doesn't look blue at all. It looks, it looks like a dirty gray. Um, another one that I use is called Burnt Sienna Shade. Uh, there's also the Burnt Sienna, just called plain old Burnt Sienna is, is a good one. Um, a lot of these come in the sets. Uh, I mentioned the sets. Uh, if you don't have any, I, I uh, really suggest that you buy a set. Um, the sets are good because I'll have a few different shades of stuff. And there's the, uh, the red colored set. And then there's a, a gray colored set. Um, they're available. Uh, Amazon, Dick Blick has them, uh, both mail order and, and sometimes in the stores. Uh, not all the stores of Dick Blick carry a full selection of pan pastels. Um, a friend of mine, Roger Malinowski at Stony Creek Designs, sells pan pastels both in sets uh, and in individually, and he has good prices and good shipping. Um, okay. So, so if I need to wear a yellow railbox car, what color would I use? It depends on the shade of yellow. You might use this color, which looks funny there, but it's called uh, Diral Yellow Extra Dark. Ouch. And yeah, exactly. Um, I'm doing another clinic for some uh, people in British Columbia and I'm doing a BC rail green box car uh, or some guys do the BNSF cars. And let me see if I can pull out of my, uh, I'm going to go back to the other camera real quick. Uh, let's see. we lost you you have to switch the microphone almost Am I back? no there you go okay good um Here's a, here is a green color that is really good for fading the BNSF green. Uh, it's called Chromium Oxide Green Shade. And it's perfect. I, I had a friend of mine who wanted to, me to do a, a BNSF car for or a BN car for him. And I couldn't find the, the, the right shade of green. And I found this one. And, and, and it, it looks a little too dark, but it isn't when you put it on the car. Uh, it works great. So it's not like you need a lighter color to weather a yellow color. No, you, you try to get a color that's almost the same as the car itself. And when you put it on, it'll become lighter uh, because you put it on uh, subtly. You know, you don't want to use a scrubber to scrub it in because then it's going to end up being the same color. But if you just drag your, your tool across the side of the car lightly, then it'll just leave a little bit and it, and it works good. 
So on the boxcar that you were weathering, was were those plastic yes. wheels or would it work also on metal wheels? No, these are metal wheels. Yeah, I, I really only use metal wheels. I, I don't know that I've ever done this on a plastic wheeled car. Uh, it should be the same because all you're doing is painting it with the, the with the Floquil uh, marker and then you're just using the paint to, uh, are, are you using the pigments just stick in the into the wet paint? And this, okay. the, the paint stays wet for a while. So you've got a few minutes to, to fiddle with it. Um, Gundam makes a lot of these types of markers now in, in various colors. And, and there's some other ones, a lot of that. So someone is modeling. Oh, we lost Pete. Stand by. Let's hope he, here he comes. I dropped out there for a second. Lost you for a second. The link to Am Australia. I bad? Can you hear me? I can, can you hear me? Perfect. Yes, yes. I don't know what happened. My my grandfather used to call out a fish went over the dam. <laughs> Someone's modeling 1912, and there's not a lot of steel cars back then. So how would you handle wood cars? I would do wood cars similar to the way that I did these with the uh, fading the sides, but then I would get in there with these pencils. With the uh, with the AK, uh, I like the AK pencils. Um, in fact, I got these from. I was in the Netherlands when this whole crazy lockdown stuff happened, and and I, I actually spent a day with uh, with Martin Wahlberg. A train show we were going to got canceled, and I went out and he had uh, he had the set of uh, weathering pencils because at the time I couldn't get them here. Um, they look like this. It's thirty seven colors. Uh, a lot of excellent colors, and uh, he got, had a set for me, and I got inspired, and I was uh, on a flight from London to L.A., uh, Air New Zealand, and I actually weathered a, a wood-sided boxcar on that flight. On the and, flight? On the flight, on my tray table. And <laughs> I, had, the, I was, had a window seat on the sunny side of the plane, and the light that I had was the best light I've ever had. You couldn't even duplicate it with all the lights that I use. Um, yeah, it was great. It was great. I could just adjust it by, by the window shade. Um, next time I go over in October, I'm, I'm, when I come back, I'm planning on uh, uh, setting up a little video recording of weathering a car. We'll see how the airline likes that. So the next question is, do you fix these powders to the box car? It's a great question. Spray? I do not. Um, now, guys that are using this chalk, and, and Dwayne talked about it earlier, when you do that, a lot of times your weathering disappears. I don't do it be, for, for the simple reason that, uh, and I do handle these cars a lot, but, but I can just go back over them. For instance, if I wipe something off, hardly, I mean, hardly anything comes off of the car. When you've got, when you've got the... Uh, um, when you've coated them with, with a flat finish, everything sticks really well. So if it does come off for some reason, you know, some guys like rubbing his T-shirt on it or something, it <laughs> it takes 30 seconds to go back over your car. I mean, it's so easy. It, and it and it just, it, it, to me, it just isn't worth sealing them um, because you take the chance once again of having a lot of your work disappear. So I don't seal them. On structures, especially wood structures, uh, they're much more absorbent than plastic, so there's there's no need at all to seal a wood structure. Last question: Was there a number on those color shaper brushes? Yes. Oh, the uh, color shaper brushes. Um, there's called there's names on them. I used cup round number zero. Zero is the size that I've only seen them in zero sizes. So I, I don't think they have a lot of other, and I used a flat chisel. Um, you can look on Amazon and, and, and you'll see all of these. Make sure you get the firm ones though. The soft ones don't work real well. Um, Cause you're trying to get into the, you know, into recesses. So you're pressing down a little hard. The soft ones will just bend right over and, uh, and, and you won't get the desired effect. One last latecomer wants to know sure. if you're using the coarse or fine pan pastels uh the coarse pan pastels are are, are come in a very few colors um primarily these are just what i call the regular ones 
coarse ones are, are like like if you're gonna they make a black and a coarse and a fine and uh i recommend the coarse black if you're trying to uh, color a coal load they look really good it gives a little bit of sparkle that, that uh, fresh coal gives um but outside of that everything else is is i guess what they would call fine okay i think they're, they're all pretty regular and, and coarse is a special one i skipped over a question here do you have any advice on how to get a tester's pen to work again a tester's pen to work again um yeah so you take them if, if they're anything like the floquel which was testers you have to bang this down because it if you can see it, it kind of goes in a little bit yeah and you just do that and that gets the the uh your color flowing uh but if you do that and then nothing happens forget it put it in the bin get a new it's, one get a new one yeah if you can I, i'm not sure what the what the status of those are with all of the discontinuations that uh, uh, the testers is doing and 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 uh, our what their parent is what RPM um, who knows well Pete thank you very very much for your time you're welcome if I could really add the numbers here you had more than 160 people watching great uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of me and ask me questions uh, send an email to clinics C L N I C S four six three, the number four six three at gmail dot com. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, sir. Be Thank safe. Thank you. Thanks. You too. Thanks, everyone.